Hello and welcome to a DSP video describing the Z-transform region of convergence. This is the equation for the bilateral Z-transform, and the region of convergence is the values of Z for which this infinite sum converges. So we need a few definitions here of different types of sequences we might be working with uh, to take the Z-transform of. So a finite length sequence is a sequence for which uh, x of n is 0 outside of some n1, capital N1, and n2 region. So it's 0 out here, and it's 0 out here. A right-sided sequence is a sequence um, that is 0 to the left of some value integer n1, and non-zero to the right. It doesn't have to be positive here. I'm just sketching these as positive, but they can take on arbitrary values and can certainly also be complex. A left-sided sequence is a sequence that goes to 0 after some integer value n2, and a two-sided sequence is just not left or right-sided. Okay, so that's the basic definitions we're going to use, and now we're going to consider some properties of the region of convergence. So here are the properties of the ROC that we want to remember. Um, the ROC is always going to be a disk or a ring centered at the origin. And that's because convergence of this summation only is going to depend on the absolute value of z. So you end up with this circular symmetry in the z-plane, the complex z-plane. right? So here are some valid regions of convergence. We can have a region of convergence that's inside some radius. We can have a region of convergence that's outside of some radius. We can have a region of convergence here that looks like a donut. And we can have a region of convergence that looks like all z, right, to where all of these um, values would be um, valid. So these are valid regions of convergence that we can have, and they all have this circular symmetry. Here are examples of invalid ROCs, right? We can't have a region of convergence that's to the left of some point, and we can't have a region of convergence that's to the right of some point. Those don't work because they don't have this circular symmetry that we would expect when we look for where this sum converges. So other properties of the ROC are that the ROC does not contain any poles. Um, the ROC can't contain a pole because a pole by definition is where this function blows up um, and therefore does not converge. So it doesn't contain any poles, but the ROC will be bounded by poles or bounded by zero, z equals zero or z equal infinity. So these are sort of three key properties of the region of convergence that we want to keep in mind. And we especially want to keep in mind that we always have this circular symmetry in the complex plane. So now let's look at finite length sequences. If a sequence x of n is finite length, then the region of convergence is going to be the whole z plane, except possibly z equals 0 or z equal infinity. And in order to see why that's the case, let's consider some really simple examples. Um, so our first example is x a of n is just delta of n. So that's a single delta function at the origin. So then if we just plug into our z transform equation here, we get x a of z is equal to 1, because there's only one non-zero term in this sum. And adding up 1 everywhere, uh, it, that's going to converge everywhere. It's just equal to 1. So the region of convergence is all z. Now let's just shift that signal over by one point. So we have delta of n minus 1. Uh, then if we do that, we again have only one term in this sum, but now it's 1 times z inverse, right? So we get z inverse, which we can write as 1 over z, uh, making it a little easier to see the pole and the 0. Um, and so the region of convergence here is going to be z greater than 0 because there's a pole at z equals 0, right? This expression, the denominator goes to 0 at 0. So there's, the pole is there. And there's a 0 at infinity, right? There, there are always an equal number of poles and zeros. Um, and so we have a finite 0, at, a finite pole at 0. Uh, and then the zero is at infinity, because when z gets really, really large, when z goes to infinity, this whole expression goes to zero. So it's a zero at infinity. The region of convergence here is z, absolute value of z greater than zero, right? That single pole, it converges everywhere except the pole right at zero. And then we have 
x c of n, which is delta of n plus 1, which is now just the same delta function, just shifted 1 to the left. If we plug in again to our sum, we get z. Uh, x c of z is equal to z, z to the positive 1. Um, so now our pole is at infinity, right? When z is infinity, this, blows, this expression blows up. The zero's at zero because the expression goes to zero uh, only at z equals zero. So the region of convergence now is just absolute value of z less than infinity. It converges everywhere except where z is infinity. So we can um, extrapolate from these, um, from these simple examples and say, if x of n is not equal to zero for n greater than zero, then we have to have a pole at z equals zero. Okay. Um, all right. So which case is that? Um, that's this case here, right? We had a pole at z equals zero. Um, if x of n is not equal to zero for n less than zero, we have to have a pole at z equal infinity, right? Because, right? So. This is a sequence that's, um, we were dealing again with finite length sequences here, but we can see that if we have anything um, to the right of the origin, we're gonna have to have a pole at z equals zero. If we have anything to the left of the origin, we have to have a pole at infinity, okay? Um, and so we start to see, you know, we can make some conclusions about whether um, something will be causal or not, right? If x of n is equal to zero for n less than zero, then we won't have a pole at infinity. Um, and so a causal sequence won't have poles at infinity. So we can start making some conclusions about the causality or anti-causality of sequences based on whether or not they have poles at z equal zero or z equal infinity. But this is um, for finite length sequences here. Um, Okay, so now we just want to comment on a few remaining uh, properties of the region of convergence. And that is, if we have a right-sided sequence, right, uh, x of n, then the region of convergence is going to be outside the outermost finite pole. So I've sketched here um, what um, a signal um, that has um, three poles, or and um, two of them are on, on this circle here, and one of them is at z equals zero. So um, this is an example of a right-sided sequence um, that has a region convergence that's outside the outermost pole, the radius of the outermost pole. Um, and part of this purpose here is to remind you that poles and zeros don't have to be on the real axis. They can be on the complex axis, or they can be um, in the complex plane. Um, and, but for right-sided x of n, we're always going to have a region of convergence that's outside the outermost pole, wherever that is. A left-sided sequence, the region of convergence is going to be inside uh, the innermost non-zero pole. So we could still have a pole at zero, um, but it's the innermost non-zero pole. So here we've got um, some poles on the, the imaginary axis. We've got um, a pole uh, two poles on the real axis. This is the one that I'm, is the in, innermost one, um, and so the region of convergence is inside there. Uh, and then two-sided sequences, um, the region of convergence will be bounded by poles. So it's a ring bounded by poles. So here's the innermost pole, and that defines the innermost um, part of the ring, and then the outermost poles are two complex conjugate poles on the same circle. Um, and then the region convergence is inside of those. So basically, the, the two-sided sequence is the sum of a left-sided sequence and a right-sided sequence. And this is just a final reminder here. The region of convergence is a connected region. So we can't have this region of convergence where we would have one ring here and then an inner ring here. That's not allowed, okay? So if we have a, a single expression for the Z-transform, we have to have a connected um, region for the region of convergence. So that is the intersection of the region of convergences um, associated with each one of the individual poles. Okay, so that's a brief review of the uh, properties of the region of convergence that will be useful to us in both taking Z-transforms and taking inverse Z-transforms.